Hey guys, Cassie Kitzmiller here with you today, coming with you, um, joining you on behalf of the Six Figure Offer Club. And I am covering a topic today that is something that I think we've all experienced at some time in our business, if we have been in business anytime at all. And that is not attracting enough ideal clients in our business to really reach the goals that we've set for ourselves, right? So today I'm gonna to break down three mistakes that I see the majority of my clients making and let's be honest, I've made them too. So I'm not going to be giving you mistakes without solutions. I'm actually going to be sharing with you some of the top mistakes that I see and then easy solutions to resolve those mistakes so that we're not keep making, so that we're not going to keep making the same mistakes, right? All right. So if you have been in business for any time at all, you know that your business sales are only as strong as the number of clients you have coming in. So at the end of the day, no matter what you do, you don't really have a business unless you have a way of consistently attracting not just anybody, but your ideal clients, your ideal customers, those people who are primed and ready to pay you money for your service, your product, your coaching packages, whatever it is that you sell, you want to have people coming in who have the problem that you have so that you're ready to solve their problems, right? I know it makes sense from a logical standpoint, but so many times in business, we get in there and focus so much on what we do that we don't really take enough time and think about how am I going to get out there in the world so that what I do can get out there to solve those problems, right? So I can get people in the door who have the problems that I solve, so that I can actually sell my services. So we're gonna talk about those three problems today, three mistakes that are keeping you from seeing those consistent sales, from having new people in your pipeline, from having the right people in your pipeline. Some of us have enough people coming in, but we're still not closing enough sales because we're not really clear on what it is that we're doing for them and really not making the problem painful enough to solve for them to turn over their hard-earned dollars, right? All right, so today we are going to be talking about three mistakes. Mistake number one, serving way too broad of an audience. So niche work is a little bit of a tricky animal. Some people are going to tell you to get so niche, so specific, so very, very clear on who you serve that you are like speaking to people who only wear um, purple spotted rain boots on Wednesdays, right? When you get that specific, you can actually work yourself out of a business because eventually there's only so many people who wear purple spotted rain boots on Wednesdays, right? Yes, they may be easier to sell and attract, but you only have so many of them. On the other side, so many of us try to get out there and solve very broad problems for a very large group of people. And then we wonder why nobody's picking us. Right there in between is the sweet spot. That magic spot that not only calls out the people you can really serve, but positions you as the go-to person to solve the problems they have, right? So how do you get to your sweet spot? You have to take the time to not only get clear on who they are, but where are they now and where do they want to be? Where are they now and where do they want to be? When you can speak more specifically and get more clear and have more um, absolute clarity around who it is that you serve and where they are and where they want to be when they are done working with you, buying your product, consuming your course, whatever it is you do, if you can tell them where they are here and tell them that where they want to be here and that you have that solution, they are going to be excited to sign up with you. So get super clear on where they are, where they want to be, and then identify who is it that is there and who is it that I can really serve. So think about, we're going to talk about this one in uh, mistake number two, but really think about that solution that you saw first. And then who is it for that I can really get the best results? So mistake number one is I'm speaking too broad. I'm just talking to everybody and that in its effect talking to nobody. Get clearer, don't go so niche that there's only 20 people out there, right? But get really clear that when you start to talk to that person, they know it's for them and they know that your solution is the one they need. All right, mistake number two that I see. This is one that I've never heard um, expressed like this, but when I started to think of it like this, it made all the difference. So mistake number two is trying to sell your offer, your product, your service to treat a symptom 
instead of solving a problem. What do I mean by that? We all want more clarity. We all want um, to go for our dreams. We all want to be our best selves. We all want to be healthy. We all want all of these big picture things, right? But when we sell to these big picture things, we are trying to sell to a solution, to a symptom they have, instead of to a problem that we can solve. What do I mean by this? Let's say, for example, that I, you know, I'm feeling sick, I'm feeling run down, I'm tired, I'm achy, um, maybe I've got a little head congestion, and I'm going to the doctor because my symptoms are painful enough that I'm going to seek a solution. So I go in the doctor, he asks me the questions, I tell him how I'm feeling, and without even taking the time to diagnose me, he just says, oh, all you need is Tylenol. Take some Tylenol, it'll cure all of your problems. So he's the doctor, right? That's what I paid for. I go home and I take my Tylenol and I feel better. I feel better as long as I take my Tylenol. But what happens in a week when I stop taking the Tylenol and I haven't really solved the problem? Those symptoms come right back and they're probably worse, right? Because I've gone a whole week just treating the symptoms instead of solving the problem. I go back to a different doctor and I tell him my symptoms. And he takes that list of symptoms and he takes the time to diagnose what's causing those symptoms, the root of the problem. He, on the other hand, says, oh, you were probably suffering from a sinus infection. Let me give you an antibiotic to take. Now, he may prescribe me some Tylenol to treat the pain, but he's going to give me a solution to the problem that I actually have, right? Can you see how powerful that is? That's what I want you doing when you create a solution for your clients. I don't want you just selling them a planner because they're too busy. I want you to say, what is the problem they have? Well, the problem if they're too busy is that they don't have a clear system of setting aside what needs done in a day and prioritizing it in a way that gets it done, right? So the planner may still be the solution, but what you're selling is that solution to their problems. The plan, the structure, the format that's going to solve the problem and relieve the symptom. When you solve a real problem, that's when you have an offer that you can scale, that you can grow, that you can sell confidently. Because no longer are you showing up and saying, my offer, my product, my service is just going to solve, comfort, soothe your symptoms. Mm -mm. I have a true solution to the problem you have. And when you can speak to that problem and help them identify what the problem is, they trust you to bring them the solution because you identify their problem. This is marketing at its finest. This is where coffee takes on excitement and new life. When you can create that aha moment and they're like, yes, that's the problem I have. Please give me the solution. I'm willing to pay for the solution. Okay, so hopefully you can see how one and two kind of going together. When you know, when you get niche enough, when you get clear enough on who you serve and what problem they have, it allows you to speak to them really, really specifically. Okay, when you get clear on the who, the problem you solve and the solution that you have for them, it lets you speak to them so clearly that they know your solution is the one for them. And this works for products. This works for services. This works for coaching. This works for so many different realms of business. So I want you to put your model in here. If you are selling a face cream, and it's an amazing face cream, you can say this face cream is just going to solve these you know, problems, which are really just the symptoms. If you're having dryness, if you're having itchiness, if you're having breakouts, if you're having um, you know, dry patches, use my face cream. Okay, great. Thanks. Take the time and say, if you're having all of those same symptoms, you know why? Well, it's because your um, skin is producing too much oil or it's not producing enough or it's overly sensitive or you have blah, blah, blah. If you take the time to diagnose the problem and then present your solution as what's going to cure that problem, now I know why I need it. Now I know why it's going to work. And yes, of course, it's going to solve all of my symptoms because it's really fixing the problem. So much more powerful, okay? Now, mistake, I could go on this all day. I'm not going to because 
I really can come up with like examples all day long on this. Okay, last one. I have to do this one. If you're a social media manager, let's just use a service-based business. You're a social media manager and you're trying to sell your clients on, um, you know, they're too busy. They don't want to be on social media all the time. They never know what to post. They don't have a clear strategy, blah, 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 blah. You can sell them your services, package them up in a pretty bow and say for $800 a month, I am going to post for you, get you more engagement and increase your followers. That sounds good, right? But so are you and every other social media manager on the internet. At that point, I'm just price shopping, right? Well, if she's going to do that for me and she's going to do these same things for me, I'm going to go with the one that's cheaper, right? That just makes common sense. But if you take the time and say, okay, you have all of these symptoms, what's the problem? Well, the problem is you do not have a clear brand strategy that's going to get you in front of the right clients, have a schedule for posting that's going to hit them at the prime times, and that's going to deliver a consistent call to action so that we can measure conversions. Well, that's your problem. You don't have that clear strategy. So I'm going to give you that brand strategy along with posting services. We're going to measure your engagement. We're going to tweak anything that needs help so that you can see the results, well, I'm going to put my money on the girl who I can see results from because she knows the solution to my problem, right? All right, last example. I told you I could talk about that all day. All right, mistake number three when it comes to not really getting in front of those idle clients, not being able to attract enough leads, not being able to close enough sales, is that you are not clear on how to nurture your leads to a sale. Now, I know that we all think that we know how to nurture leads to a sale. We're like, well, I opened up my strategy call. That should be enough, right? They can get on a strategy call with me. Then I tell them about my program. Or, well, I have a questionnaire that they can download and it answers all their questions. That should be enough, right? It tells them anything that they can have questions on. I've got answers for it. Oh, no, I've got them. I'm converting them to a sale. I've got an incredible Facebook group full of all the information they could ever want on what I do, right? That is not nurturing that is giving education that's information there's a difference between information and a nurturing through the sale journey when you are able to provide information and connect with them on that emotional level that's when they feel nurtured right you can give me a textbook all day long and tell me go take care of your problem i can read it but then what right like i'm still on my own when you give somebody information and then you tell them why and you give them support and you're accountable for them and they can actually start to see some results before they pay you money, that's when they're gonna be ready for the sale. So I want you to think about, do I have a process in place that answers these three questions? At the end of the day, almost every question our client asks comes down to three questions. One, can you help me? Number two, do you have a solution that I can trust? And three, is the cost going to be worth it? Will I get an ROI if you're a business minded, okay? Can you help me? We all wanna know. Okay, that's great, but can you help me? Do you actually have a solution? Do you have a real solution to a problem or are you just selling me something else that's just gonna add another thing to my to-do list? And finally, is it worth it? That's where that value factor comes in. Not how much, can, not can I afford it? Not how much does it cost, but is it worth it? Am I going to see a return on my investment greater than what I put in? When you have a process that walks your people through that journey, through that, can you help me? A lot of that's information-based. Do you have a solution I can trust? That's a, you know, emotion and education. They want to know you can help them, but they also want to be able to trust you. So that's where that no like trust factor comes in. Okay. And then finally, is it worth it? The value, the value is always that blend of, I understand it, but I have to feel it. Okay. That's where that emotion has to take over. We all understand being an emotional buyer. We may go to a car lot, and have in our head a list of must-haves and we have two cars sitting in front of us and that both check off the list in our head, right? But the one that we want, that's the color we want that has the heated seats and the double moon roofs and um, you know the leather and all of the package, it may be 8,000, 10,000 more. The same thing that, you know, same type of vehicle that checks off my list may be sitting right here and the cost is less, and I know that it's still just as good of a car, 
but my emotions are telling me that this is worth more to me because it's valuable in the things that I consider valuable, right? Oh, well, this is obviously a better choice because now logically it hits the same boxes, but emotionally I want to justify the higher price tag because it has things in there that I find value in. We will all pay more for value, perceived value on what's important to us, okay? That's why it's so important to know that ideal client. So make sure that you actually have a client journey in place. Now, can you do this in a Facebook group? Yes. Uh, I've seen it done well and I've seen it done really bad. I see it done really badly <laughs> more often than I see it done well. And it's not because of lack of care. It's honestly just because of lack of time and lack of team. Um, time because it takes a lot of time to send people through a really effective nurture sequence if it's built out on Facebook. Team because almost everybody who does it effectively has a team of people that are right there um, backing you up. So can it be done on Facebook? Yes. Can it be done through email? It can, but you really lack, again, that nurture. It's hard to nurture somebody through email because you don't know what all they open. You can't control when they open it. You can't control when they're going to consume your content. That's why we absolutely love using the program that we have in place through Mighty Networks. And if you're somebody who likes to see it, please check out our free community. You don't even have to stick around. If you just want to see what it looks like in place, if you want to see what it looks like in actuality, hop in there and check it out. But we're very intentional about nurturing our clients through a journey. We share, we connect with them as people. We share information with them to educate them, and we help them understand the value in what it is we offer. That's why every time we open the doors to Six Figure Offer Club, we have people in there who sign up like after one call. We do one live event, we open the cart, and we almost close that cart without ha ever having to do any follow-up because the people who are part of that community have been nurtured through, they've self-identified as people who have the problem that we can help them solve, and they trust us to bring the solution. That's where the power of knowing who you serve, knowing what problem you solve, and having a client journey in place is absolutely the answer to your client needs, okay? This light is being crazy. I apologize if I'm like glowing over here. But I hope that was helpful for you. If you want to see that in, um, if you want to see that in action, again, I will drop the link below and you can check us out in our free community. If you want to experience what it's like to set up your own community for free for 14 days and to see all of what's capable, I'm going to drop the link to our referral. Um, it's a referral link, which is why you're going to get access to unlock all of that goodness because it actually unlocks the business plan for 14 days. So you can see not only the community creation, but the courses and the groups and the paid, all of the paid content as well. You get to play around with that for 14 days, um, which to me is really helpful because there's so many platforms out there. Um, and I like to be able to really test and see if what the platform does is what I really want it to do in the way I want to do it, right? All right, so I will wrap up here. Remember, get clear on who you serve, get clear on the problem you solve, and have a really well-designed client journey to get them from where are they now to where are they ready to work with you and ready to say yes to that sale. All right, guys, I will see you next week with another session and how to get clearer and really just build out your six-figure offer. Bye.